This is a video I took right off uh, channel to CBS News. It was recorded um, 3 16 22 on CBS Mornings. They give a warning. Uh, you should heed it if you're sen sensitive viewers don't watch this, but it's about coward cops like the ones in Uvalde. Here we go. You probably missed this. <laughs> Welcome back to CBS Mornings. This next story begins with a horrific tragedy, and that is the word horrific. But it's not about that. Our lead national correspondent, David Begno, is here because, David, I heard you say it's really about strength, it's about love, and most importantly, it's about hope. Bingo. Bingo. Good morning, Gail. First, a warning. Part of the story we're about to show you is hard to watch, may not be suitable for all children. But this is a story about what happened to 22-year-old Jacqueline Duran a college student and an experienced dog sitter in North Texas. She was mauled by two dogs. We have never before seen video of her rescue, which saved her life, but not before the dogs changed her face forever. I want you to know we spent the last two months following this story, her recovery. She's got a long road ahead, but she said to us, I have a story to tell and I want people to hear it. And she hopes you'll listen. Jacqueline Duran's face was nearly erased two days before Christmas and one day before her 22nd birthday. It happened on a dog sitting trip gone horrifically wrong in the Dallas, Texas suburb of Coppell. I see her feet right there. First responder body camera video shows the two dogs who attacked her holding the police at bay, leaving Jacqueline agonizing for help. We can't make entry because of the dogs. The dogs in the instant after she opened the door were not like the lovely dogs Jacqueline said she had met once before. Sam, can you hear me? Are you the only one inside? Is the big dog right next to you? Lucy, a German Shepherd mix, and Bender, a boxer pit bull, pinned her down and tore off her nose, ears, lips, and cheeks to the bone. So the dogs drag you from the front door to the living room. Yes. What do you remember about where they were attacking you? Uh, I like my arms, my face the most, especially when I felt the skin hanging from my face. I was just, I, I thought I was gonna die. From the time police arrived, 37 minutes passed before first responders felt safe going in. A medic rescued Jacqueline and ran out with her. She was rushed to a trauma center in grave condition. She had lost 30% of the blood in her body. It was a blessing, really, that she was even found alive at all. When the dogs rushed her, the door was left open, and that triggered a security alarm at the home of Justin and Ashley Bishop. Have you had any problems with the dogs? Has Zero. 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 The bishops told police the dogs came into their home from rescue organizations. I have three kids, you know, one's three years old. I know, no history of violence, none. But the words crazy dogs on a sign about a sleeping baby hanging on their front door is one indicator of negligence. That is according to a lawsuit filed by Chip Brooker, Jacqueline's attorney. The warning on the front door to me, I think, uh, suggests that the bishops knew that both of these dogs had acted aggressively to people arriving at the front door. You're trying to build this case of negligence. What do you have to prove that? Uh, what we have to prove is an examination of, of the dogs that we did after this attack, uh, which we believe shows that the dogs were dangerous and had vicious propensities. The bishops turned down a request by CBS News for an interview, but in a statement, they said they were heartbroken about what happened. The police videos show how cautious officers were, even when trying to contain the dogs, particularly Bender. Once at the hospital, emergency surgery lasted for seven hours before Jacqueline's parents, John and Shirley Duran, heard from one of the doctors. She had to be resuscitated on the trauma table. Multiple times. Describe for me the moment you first saw her after the attack. I was just glad to see her alive. Her whole face was totally bandaged. They had her in an induced coma for over a week. Must have been somewhat deceiving because the bandages really covered up the worst of it. It did. Exactly. It really did. I just kept telling her that she was a miracle and that she was going to be restored. She will be. When we met Jacqueline seven weeks after she had been in the hospital, doctors had grafted skin from her buttocks and her forehead 
to start the process of rebuilding her face. I feel like I didn't ask her this, so I think that it's time to show who I am now, and I can't be scared of it. What are you hoping to get across with this interview? I want her dog owners to know their animals and be able to communicate with their sitters how they are. These are the same dogs who you had met a week earlier that you said were lovely. <laughs> you know, lovely one week and killers the next. How, how do you square the two? Honestly, I see just they don't change their attitude from the time that I eat them to the time that I go there for the first time. Jacqueline was released from the hospital after 60 days. Leaving there was a brave and spirited 22-year-old woman deserving of the applause that she got from the doctors and nurses. When she got home, first responders gave her a champion's welcome. I really appreciate it. Her dogs were even waiting, and so was her boyfriend. Jacqueline doesn't want to be seen as a victim, but rather an example. And that may be why she didn't hide the scars that showed the more than 800 bites on her body. So when I first interviewed you, you could open your mouth about five millimeters. Yes. Now you're up to 21 millimeters. Yes. We've had the benefit of watching you heal over the course of a month, and it is notably different, better. Are you seeing that yourself? Yeah, I am seeing that. And what does that do just for your own spirits? I think it, it really lifts me up compared to where I was. Yeah. Because I just felt so helpless in the hospital. And being at home, I knew I was going to heal more here than I could at the hospital. Therapy is a full-time job now. Her mouth is stretched one millimeter at a time so that she can eat more. Countless surgeries are to come. When you hear one to three more years of surgeries, is that daunting for you? It's not fun to think about, but I also think about how amazing the doctors are. And so I'm putting it in their hands to help me. Come on. <laughs> you should know that there's a lot of hope in Jacqueline and her family. In fact, in looking to the future, guess what? There is a place in her heart still to love dogs. She'd been dog sitting for seven years and still dreams of working with animals. The last we spoke, you mentioned maybe something involving animal welfare. I was thinking dog training because that's... Dog training? Yes. That's my dream, but I'm not sure where life is going to take me yet. She has her senses now. She can walk, she can talk, she can smell, she can hear, and she can see. She's going to be fine, I think. Hi. In addition to the love from her family, there is 24-year-old Nathan, who she has dated for three years. He just recovered from cancer. And when he was going through treatment, Jacqueline often drove him and stayed with him. Now. I'm so grateful that I get the opportunity to show the same level of love and care that she showed me. During that time, I'm glad that I get the chance to. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that I get to be there for her. Jacqueline told us she'd like to hear from the bishops. She has not. She said, David, I would like an apology. She says, I haven't even been paid in full for the service that I went there for. I should tell you that the bishops told us in their statement that they would never put anyone in harm's way. And a Texas judge ordered that both of the dogs be euthanized. What an extraordinary story. What an extraordinary woman Jacqueline is. And the fact that she agreed to come on camera after going through something so horrific and where she still has so much work to be done to restore her face, which we know with medical technology, they can do that. And her boyfriend, Nathan, who was stood by her side all this time and her family, it's extraordinary. She said, talking about it is therapy for me. I don't understand though why the police took uh, 37 minutes to go in. They were armed. They were armed, they had a gun, Understood. and I asked them that question, and the chief sent us a statement last night saying we didn't know how badly injured she was. But even, even yeah. that doesn't, it's not a really complete answer, but that is the answer you got. Um, it's a story that proves there's always life still to live, yes. you know, on the back end of a tragedy, yes. no matter what the tragedy is. She went there prior to her babysitting yeah. job to meet them, right? Yes. and the dogs were in a crate at the time, the owner let them out, she said we had a great time. The sign that showed that these dogs were crazy means that they knew in my mind, 
that the dogs were aggressive towards strangers or people approaching the house. That is the owners, not the dogs. I know we got to go, John, but I love her spirit, her, Jacqueline's spirit of hope. John Tower saying we got to go, got to go. Her spirit of hope and that she's still so optimistic. You were right, and her voice is so strong. We thank you, Jacqueline, yes, for the we do. courage to come Cheering on. you on, Jacqueline. Cheering you thank on you. always. No, thank you, no, David. Thank you. thank you. Up next, Vlad Duce has the stories he'll be talking about today other than the one he just saw. Okay, and I just want to add to that, if you watched this all the way through, these coward cops with guns let that lady get mauled by them dogs for 37 minutes because the cops are cowards. They've been cowards for years. They hide behind the badge and gun. Uh, it's just so sad. This thing in Uvalde was bound to happen. It, this, this was before Uvalde. So, you know, I mean, the coward cops are rampant. All right, uh, I'm going to sign off. Uh, Rockman Al, out.